What's going on YouTube? Today is Sunday. If you watching this on the replay, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the notification bell so when I go live, your phone will let you know. There's no telling when I'm going to go live. I may turn it off if the signal bad. I don't even know if I got a good signal, but when people come in, then let me know. Now it's Sunday. Sunday night. Just got out the shower. Washing my clothes right now. Chilling. Today was the start of a new pay week. Sunday. Say I did pretty good today. Obviously, I didn't do a lot of work. Did a lot of, well I did service work today, but it was mostly me just sitting in the truck or standing in the back of the trailer all day. Milk the clock nice and good. You know, when I first woke up this morning, I was tired, boy. Oh, I was so tired, man. Uh, I got off work last night around 11 p.m. Went to sleep at midnight. Dispatch hit me up at 4 in the morning. <laughs> but I got up at 4 in the morning. I was so tired. It was so sad, boy. I, I wasn't supposed to work till 11. I just worked till 11 because pay cut off, obviously, at nighttime. You know, you can work as long as you want, as long as you back up when your shift starts. We work 16-hour shifts over here, so I worked to 11, man, knowing the paper going to cut off. Got me eight loads in. Went to sleep. Dispatch hit me up around 4 for uh, my first load. And uh, man, it was pitch black dark, no street lights, no nothing. I drove all the way to the shipper. Because I know how dispatch operate. You know, they got the GPS, they got the camera, and they got all that stuff. You know, so uh, I drove to the shipper. Since it was pitch black dark, I uh, I bagged in like I was finna load the trailer. And you damn right, I went back in and went to sleep all the way into 7 in the morning. What? <laughs> 7 in the morning, I woke back up. Three hours later. I said, damn, dispatch ain't even noticed. I still ain't got loaded yet, but you know. All they notice is uh on the tracking device, he's at the shipper. That's all that matters. Okay, cool. So got me three hours of rest in. Now I feel good to go. Got loaded, delivered the load. Then when I delivered, they asked me if I wanted to do some service work today. So uh they showed me what all I had to do, just pretty much clean up, just stay on the frat site and just clean up everything. You know, hourly pay all day. I say, you know what, I don't feel like doing a lot of driving today, I'm just staying here and get paid all day, and that's what I did, I stood there and got paid all day, and plus it's not cold outside today, I think it's around, I don't know, 50 degrees, you know, you don't need no cold or nothing outside, probably can stand out there in shorts, so I did that all day, all the way until about, what, 6 o'clock, when 6 p.m. hit, I told the uh, frat crew, I said, hey, trailer full, Trailer full, can't no, can't take no more, can't take no more product. They said, all right. I said, yeah, I hooked all the, unhooked all the hoses, packed everything up, drove over to the disposal. I was at the disposal about 7 p.m. Unloaded the trailer, got over here about what are we around eight right now? Shoot, I don't know what time it is. Yeah, eight o'clock right now. Hit the shower. Shoot. Of course, I had to grab some free food. You know. Got me two cheeseburgers for the free and not the fee. Although I ain't gonna eat those tonight. I'm just high those. I like to keep those in my refrigerator. Just in case I ain't got nothing to eat at all, you know. Can always get free food right here at the yard for your refrigerator. You know. Since I've been at this job, this is definitely the absolute. I mean absolute. Cheapest food bill I ever had in all of trucking and I mean in all I'm talking about in my whole nine years of trucking coming to North Dakota doing this uh, water hauler this is the least amount of money especially in a whole month that I ever spent uh, on food man I think I didn't spent since I've been here probably less than I'm gonna say less than two hundred dollars for the whole month on food you know uh, and that two hundred didn't get much you know, obviously, in the, when you buy food from the truck stop, obviously, it's super inflated pricing. So, it's not like I bought much with the $200, you know. 
For example, yesterday I got some milk, some cereal, uh, four packs of tuna, a pack of soda, oh, and some ham, cheese, bread, and mayonnaise. That right there was $80. That was insane. That was insane. The pack of hair was 10 The milk was 5 Pack of cold drinks was 12 I mean, the prices were insane. Pack of tuna, like $2 each. Man. Oh, the mayonnaise. The mayonnaise was $12 too. I said, man, god damn. $12 for some mayonnaise? Man, pippin', 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 boy. Ooh, you shoot. Ain't nobody us truck drivers trying to be cheap now because rates is all down. They say, yeah, man, we know these drivers, they so cheap now. They ain't got no money. They got to buy ham sandwiches. So what we going to do is, yeah, my name's $12. Pack of ham, $10. You want some bread, too, with that? Yeah, $8 for the bread, too. Yeah, pippin', 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 boy. You had $30. Do you need some cheese, too? You need some cheese? Another $8. Right? Woo! Woo, you did. Oh, don't forget. Let me throw some tax on now. $50 right there. You had $50 for, for a goddamn ham. A, a 12, 12 ham sandwiches. <laughs> it's so sad, boy. It's so sad, boy. I like that, man. I don't know about this. I don't know. But, but like I said, I don't mind paying it because majority of the food I ain't got so far has been free. So, oh, don't forget, you got to get a pack of water. A pack of water in North Dakota, they got to they got hit you with their RKO on that. Yeah, they going to come with the RKO. Yeah, oh, $20. $20 on them. $20 for the pack of water, boy. Twenty dollars. Oh, they gonna bring you down to your knees for the pack of water. They know you want that. Oh, you want a pack of water? Twenty dollars. Yeah, dollar per bottle, baby. Dollar per bottle. <laughs> oh, it's highway robbery. It's so sad. It's so sad, boy. It's all good though. At least Dairy Queen is not overinflated in their prices. You know, they they Dairy Queen is pretty pretty reasonable. So, you know, cheeseburger combo, fries and drink, that's about $9. Then we add taxes, about 11 or so right in there. They kind of, it's still kind of reasonable around here. They ain't just charging $20 a combo. None of that nonsense. So, Dairy Queen pretty cool when they food, man. Since I've been here, I had them three times. I done tried the flamethrower burger and two cheeseburgers. Fries, just a regular drink. You know, I ain't I only had Dairy Queen three times. That's all the fast food I hear down here, other than I guess the disposal food. But right now I'm drying my clothes, so that's gonna be another 30 minutes. So while they drying, talk to you guys right quick. Talk to you guys, man. I'm taking it slow now, man. You know, the day is pretty much over with. I'm done for the day. I'm I'm go back in, go to sleep at about six in the morning. You know, uh, Monday, I mean, I'm, I'm, I may hit it hard tomorrow, may hit it hard Tuesday, shit, Tuesday, I automatically get out of work about 4 p.m., I don't know if I'm gonna leave out Tuesday night, or if I'm just gonna go to sleep, and then wait till the sun come up and leave out Wednesday morning, I'm not sure, because, like, if I leave... If I leave out, nah, it probably had to be Wednesday morning. If I leave out of North Dakota Tuesday night, first of all, it's nighttime. You know, I I came through. Look, when I came to North Dakota, I came through North Dakota at night. The whole ride was at night. That that is a horrible way to go. That is, I'm talking about no street lights. Oh, and I came through at night through the fog at that. I think I forgot what interstate that is that come through North Dakota. 95, 90, 92. One of them high. One of them numbers, man. I forgot. But, uh, man, that's tough right there. So, you know, uh, I don't know if I want to do that at nighttime again. But from here to the interstate is about, I think, two hours. I'm two hours from the interstate. And once I get on the interstate, I take the interstate all the way to, um... Uh, Minnesota, where I probably get a hotel room, unless, uh, unless, well, no, I probably get a hotel room in Minnesota. 
Because from here to Minnesota is like nine hours. That's why I got my hotel room on the way up here. So, you know, if I leave out Wednesday morning, let's just say I leave out Wednesday morning, 3 a.m. or something. Nine hours go by, be, I don't know, 3 p.m. or something. Like, it'd be close enough time for me I can take it to a hotel room or something. You know. Could drive. No, I ain't going to drive the whole way. <laughs> I know I ain't going to drive the whole way. Plus, it ain't the weekend, you know. It's not the weekend, so when the sun come up, still got traffic. Well, nah, ain't gonna be no traffic. From from North Dakota to Minnesota, I don't think it's, it should be no traffic. There ain't no work traffic. There ain't no cities. There ain't no big cities till you get to Minnesota, so that's nine hours. It should be smooth sailing. But uh, once I wake up and go from Minnesota through uh, Illinois, uh, I think Illinois, St. Louis, Missouri, then Nashville, some of them cities are high traffic. But, we'll see, man. I started up my car, filled it up. It's all ready to go. Just got to finish packing some more clothes up in the car. That's a long drive, too, man. I forgot. I think it's uh, back to the house is like 21 hours or something like that. 22 hours, something, I forgot. North Dakota to freaking Nashville, about 20 something hours, that's for sure. But I only drive halfway, get a hotel room, you know, then finish out the rest. No snowstorms, I checked the weather. It's no snow coming. I checked the weather up here in North Dakota and Minnesota. It's going to be like 54, 55, 60 degrees. So, I ain't got to worry about no snowstorms. All the roads are dry. Smooth selling. Smooth selling. Should be pretty easy. Read some of these comments. Take it from the top, baby. 83 people watching. I ain't doing nothing but wasting your time today. Charles Gaines in the building. What up, CAJ? Hit the like button. But it might slick wheel. My shoe shine in the shop. Low boost on the air drive. Gave up on me. The air drive. I need an air drive on the flat top. The air no, nah, no, I do I? What's the air drive? No, nah, I need an air compressor. I need an air compressor. I need to replace it. It ain't broken, but I need to replace it. Where is Josh? I have no idea, man. I had to go on his channel and uh catch up on what he got going on. Who are you supplying? I'm not sure what you mean. You gotta uh, elaborate. We call that working on the containment in PA. Nah, another boo boo. Sunset in North Dakota, about to get dark as hell. You damn right. As Look, I was gonna go to the store right quick. But shit, man. The lights on my Challenger, man, they ain't bright enough. Even with the bright lights on, they not bright enough to see through North Dakota. But then again, you know, my headlights got tint on them, so. <laughs> my headlight, even my headlights are tinted, so, you know. I'd I be better off just driving through, through the daytime, you know. Because I got to take two-lane roads for two hours to get to the interstate. Now, if I was by the interstate... I wouldn't even care, man. I just, as long as it ain't no fog outside, I hit the interstate. But even the interstate in North Dakota, it's no street lights. It's nothing. It's just your headlights only. There's no traffic. You're going to be the only one on the interstate. You may see a truck driver every freaking 30 miles. You may see a truck coming through. Up here in this part of North Dakota, you may see a truck coming through. You know, I don't think I'm, yeah, I'm not up on uh, I-80. I'm above I-80, so... All the trucks and stuff down there on I-80. I think I'm on, what is this, I-90, I-95? I'm somewhere. I think I-90 is where it is. But, let's see. Everybody asking, where's my favorite lease driver? Did something happen? Zaz is paying Pippin too. He leased the truck or something? Y'all asking about jobs. I, I haven't checked this channel out in, since I've been up in North Dakota. I don't know what's going on. Last time I seen Josh, he was uh getting out of leasing and going company. And uh, 
He was supposed to be a company driver. I don't know if he actually went and did it. I, I haven't seen his channel since. Who is the best company up in North Dakota for company drivers? I have absolutely no idea. Let's see. Flat top still look good. Just passed it yesterday. Beaver Creek. Come back with groceries, by the way. Why you creeping on the flat top? What up, Andrew? All the way from Port Arthur, Texas, man. You down there with all the chemical haulers. Down there with the chemical chemical haulers, Port Arthur. I used to run out of uh, LaPorte, Texas. Down there's quad the carriers. I used to run out of their yard, quad the carriers. Out of, uh, man, I forgot what customer I was down there with. I was with some customer on the port. They required a five million dollar insurance policy, but they'll take they'll take you as a one truck pony. But damn, it's been so long. I didn't forget. I forgot that whole area. I don't even know if QC still right there. I like that area, man. It was a real cool area. That was when I hit the flat top Lee Stone pulling chemicals. I was running a load board at the time. I used to always run from uh, Memphis to uh, Laredo. That paid a lot of money. Just a dropping hook. You know, you go down there, drop a loaded trail on the board of Laredo, pick up a empty, and go back to the house. And I would always take that load, man. I think that load was paying. Damn, I can't remember the numbers. I want to say like 7200 Take a loaded trailer from Memphis, Tennessee to go, I think it was like 800, between 800 to 1200 miles, Memphis, Tennessee, Laredo, Texas. Like $7,200, man. Drop the loaded trailer in Laredo. You ain't got to unload. You ain't got to load nothing. You just drop your hook. Drop the trailer. That's $7,200. You'll pick up your empty. Day head all the way back to the house. Easy money. Easy money. Everything with hazmat was, of course, out and back. You go out, load it, come back empty, so, you know, but. Let's see where we at. I work next to the place that is parked. I don't know, man, the flat top ain't parked in Nashville. How's Mr. Charlie treating Andrew? What's Pippin? Oh, what's up, Pippin? I keep asking about Josh. Did something happen to Josh? Did I talk to Fuck You Money? I haven't seen Fuck You Money in years. Checking in from San Antonio. Y'all think I'm sleeping? Nah, I'm not sleeping at all. I'm wide awake. What's going on? Was going to a Chicago company, but they charging twenty five hundred escrow. Oh, that's all of them. Yeah, that's all of them. If you ain't, if you didn't know that, all the YouTubers that's doing the Chicago thing, they all pay. All of them are paying escrow, and no, they don't get their money back when they quit either. So that, that's all. Everybody is up there paying escrow. Might not be twenty five hundred dollars. It's like two thousand, twenty five hundred. I heard all the way up to four thousand. So that's all them Chicago companies. They all paying that. And the reason they paying that is because the type of people they hire is going to abandon their shit. Probably ain't going to bring it back to Chicago. So they just going to charge them up front. So, you know, when you don't return their shit, they already got your money, you know. Plus, they just going to probably keep your last check on top of the escrow. So, you know. Seen a good deal on the FLD 132, only 15k. Does the Justice Pro allow fingerprinting in states other than your home state? Uh, Justice Pro and fingerprinting—that's two different things. Uh, Justice Pro is just how you get your license. The fingerprint part—that's that's totally separate. Which company buys the product looking for an investment? Which company buys the product? I'm not sure what you mean. The QC train you on trailers. Yeah, they gonna train everybody. I think training was 
Well, see, I did training with Quality Carriers for two weeks up in uh, St. Louis, Missouri. So I pretty much lived in St. Louis, Missouri for two weeks. Um, lived out of a hotel, of course. Explored the city. Uh, when I went to St. Louis, Missouri, and explored the city, man, it was it was pretty rough. Um, I was staying over. Well, technically, I was staying in Illinois because I was on the other side of the interstate. I was over there by that club. They had us housed by that club. Uh, what's the club on the side of the interstate? Uh, the strip club. I forgot the name of it. But they had us housed over there. That's a rough part of town, too, where that strip club is on the side of the interstate. But uh, I would go cross the bridge, go into town, and obviously you'll be downtown, you know, you see the the, 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 the freaking R's and all that, and uh, I would ride through downtown, man, just to see how they downtown is like, then of course I went over by the uh, casino, went over by the casino, and boy, that street, I don't know what street that is, that leads to the casino, that, whoo, you talking about, whoo, you talking about a rough way to live, boy, whoo, that, that street is tough! Oh, that street is tough. Oh, I forgot the name. What, what, what street is that? Y'all know what I'm talking about. That street, that street through downtown that goes down to the casino. That whole street is, well, that's tough right there. Oh, that's a tough way to live right there. Oh, you talking about some poverty and, oh, goddamn, boy. It was, oh, oh, boy. I don't know what street that was, man. Damn, that's so sad, boy. That's so you know what the crazy thing about that 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 street that I'm talking about? <laughs> I'm gonna give y'all a reminder. After I left QC, two years later got my authority. Um uh, me and Justin Lewis had left the freaking oil field. We got our first food grade account hauling flour on that same street. On that same street, right off the river. Got our first run, man. That's when we started doing it. Uh, we got to account for 20000 a week. Hauling flour, man. We was hauling flour to a factory that made graham cookies for schools. So, you know, you now they put the little cookies in y'all uh, high school lunches, middle school lunches, the little graham crackers, or uh, not, I think they're chocolate chip cookies, whatever kind of cookies they are. We hauled the flour for it. So, that was a massive amount of money. Too bad we lost it. It's so sad. It's so sad we lost it. That was the. I don't know if that was the fastest money we had made. I think it was. I know how we lost it. We didn't have four pod trailers. That's what it was. We had me and Justin had three pod trailers, but they was paying us twenty thousand dollars a week, and I think we was only working four days a week, one load a day. We was going from. Uh, St. Louis, Missouri to Evansville, Indiana. I think it was only a two-hour ride, man. Two-hour ride. Two-hour ride to get loaded, then a two-hour ride to come back and deliver. And that's how we, the other freaking 18 hours of the day was just us chilling, you know, trying to figure out, you know, what, what to do to waste time. So, I mean, we, we, used to make, we used to make a killing, man. We, woo, it's so sad. It's so sad. That's why I keep my pneumatic, man, in case I get to drive to go back and start calling customers again. You know. I had to get a whole new team together, though. Got to get some young people, man. It's got some fire in them. Want to make some real money, man. That same account, if I was a company driver at any other boat pneumatic carrier, it really don't matter which one it was, there they'd be... Let's just say I went to Bruce Oakley. Bruce Oakley on that same account, they'll pay me, I think, $2.11 loaded mile. Uh, you have to go on their website. They'll tell you exactly what they pay. It'll be something stupid. $2.11 uh, per loaded mile, and you're only going two hours, so it's like, what, 120 miles? They pay nothing. They, 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 you making damn near, I don't know, $2,000 gross for the week, they making 20000 So it's so sad. It's so sad. Or if you get one of these companies is paying you a uh, cent per mile, I don't know, 70 cent a mile to go two hours, that ain't going to pay you nothing. You know, 
You're getting paid by the hour. It's only four hours. Still ain't making no money. It's so sad, boy. It's so sad. They would never tell you that accountant's paying twenty dollars, even if you was a some type of lease operator at freaking eighty percent or or like the Chicago ninety percent company. You'll be getting ninety percent of like I don't know four thousand dollar gross for the week or something. You know, something stupid. They'll never tell you the real numbers. East St. Louis. What's up? What's up? Did you have the fingerprint in Florida? Oh no, no. Now I finger, I got my fingerprints done in Tennessee, in my hometown. Yeah, uh, I got a Florida home state license. That's my de designated home state for the next four years. I got my insurance license for the next four years. So, you know, but no, nah, I did the fingerprints at the house. Once you pass the test, you can, I think you can do the fingerprints anywhere. I think I don't know. I did mine in Tennessee. That's why I would imagine you'd have to do it. Yeah, but nah, I didn't go down to no Florida, didn't get no, do no fingerprints. That's what I thought, man, they, they fingerprint everywhere. Because you, you can get your fingerprints through TSA. I went to, uh, I think it was Incognito or something, something like that. Down there, is that the front street where the casino at? Yeah, I think it is the front street. Is that what it's called? Is it real front? Is that the name of the street? I can't remember, but I know on the way to that casino, that whole street. Matter of fact, all the chemical, I think it's like chemical uh, tanker companies over there too on that street. You get off the interstate, you get off the interstate in somebody's neighborhood, you'll make a left to the to the to the red light, then you'll turn right and go underneath the bridge. And once you go underneath that bridge, man, it's straight. It's straight toughness all the way to the casino, boy. It's straight, boy. It's, it's wild. It's straight. That's what made me say, man, St. Louis? Oh, no. Oh, oh, no. I would not. Uh-uh. Whew, boy, it's tough out there. It's tough. I wouldn't. I can't do it, man. I, at least the part of St. Louis I saw. I, I can't I can't spend no money out there in Vance. I, I can't do any of that. And then don't forget, once me and Justin Lewis came, we were using mud flap. Oh, let me tell you about the mud flap. You use a mud flap in St. Louis, Missouri. Then you got loves, you got pallet, and then you got the mud flap. Okay. Now for y'all, that if you ever use mud flap over in St. Louis, Missouri, you go to that one truck stop over there. I don't know the name of it. The little mom and pop truck truck stop with the with the bulletproof windows and the security guard inside. With with the with the I don't know what they got. So look, look, I'm I'm explaining it to you. You get off the interstate. When you get off the interstate. And you come to the red light. It don't it don't matter which way you look. First thing you see is junkies leaning. They they got the balancing act going on. They on one leg. They leaning back all the way like this, and they ain't moving. And you're like, man, damn, what the hell? What kind of magic trick is that, man? What he's gonna he be like this? They they got on one leg, and boy, it be tough out there. I'm like, man, damn, look, Justin, look at this. Uh, that fool balancing right there, boy. I don't know what that is, boy, but he be he be out there. Be, ooh, it be tough. It'd be tough, boy. Ooh. Then you go over there and get fuel. And you got all the junkies rushing you, boy. Ooh, that's tough right there. It's tough. It's tough out there, boy. But the fuel was cheap, though. Fuel was cheap. I told Justin, I said, look, we're going to deal with these junkies, man. We're going to deal with these junkies. We both, both of us had pistols. So, you know, hey, I deal with them. They were friendly, so. You know, we just need that cheap fuel. <laughs> that, that, we, 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 the fuel was cheap. It was cheap. I don't forget how cheap it was, but that mud flap and that $20,000 account, it all went together. Even though we was making top dollar, we still wouldn't go and get the more expensive fuel. I wish I would spend extra premium money on some fuel. Oh, <laughs> shit. I wish I would. <laughs> Nine on the boo boo. Then after that, I think me and Justin, we had uh, we tried to go downtown to the casino. It's another, it's another uh, casino downtown. We tried to meet our little uh, uh, the guy that was uh, the customer that had our account. He was gonna take us to the casino in a ballpark game down there, but when we got down now, we had came up to a low bridge and the goddamn trucks and trailers couldn't fit underneath the motherfucker, so. We couldn't go down to the to the to the casino downtown. Not the one I was talking about at first. Not the one over by Riverfront. It's another casino. I guess it's like 
in the real part of downtown, I guess, but we can go to it. People get killed at their BP across the street from their truck stop. Is it a BP across the street? I don't remember. Yeah, it is a gas station across the street, ain't it? Yeah, that's where all the jackets hang out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They be clubbing at night there. Is it a club or is that a... That is a gas station, ain't it? Are they still in business, though, is the question. I don't know. Been rocking with CAJ since night transportation. $1,000 a week. Paycheck videos. It's a long time. Night transportation. That's a long time ago, huh? Think what you'd have been out of North Dakota long enough. This cold weather don't bother you at all. It don't bother you at all. North Dakota. Never thought I'd be up in North Dakota. Y'all want to know how I ended up in North Dakota? I actually had a fuel job. A lot of y'all kept asking me what happened to the fuel job. I had a fuel job paying me $30 an hour. When they did the drug test, did the physical, they paid for everything. And uh, when it was time for orientation, they just kept, uh, I guess just, just they just kept, I don't know if they were stalling or if they were telling the truth. I don't know what happened. But they were scheduled orientation for me to meet with the trainer. And when it was time, like the day before it was time to go meet the trainer, they would change the date because they would say something had, you know, something would happen with the trainer. And long story short, after about a month of doing that, I just said, you know what, I'm going to North Dakota. And that's why I didn't do it. So, uh, that was with Circle K, by the way, if y'all want to know who's paying $30 an hour in Nashville. It was Circle K. So, didn't take the Circle K position because like i said they just stood me up you know even to this day i'm still i'm still waiting for freaking uh jamie to get back to me I'm like jamie you just like every time you tell me to meet with the trainer you just like the day before you just change the date and time like what the fuck and at this point that was in december december turned to january now we ain't got near mars going into april so jamie over at circle k yeah you stood me up but now i'm in north dakota so that's what happened with the fuel position. So I was gonna be a fuel hauler. Turned out a water hauler. I love doing takers, that's what it is. I try to stick to takers, man. I've been a taker driver damn near all of my career. Tanking pays the most, so that's why I stick to it, man. I done damn near every form of taker they got. Hazmat chemicals, I done done corrosives, flammables, poison, dry bulk, water hauler, you know, I done done motor oil over at Etzon in Memphis, I done hauled out of Etzon, hauled some motor oil from over there, you know, I done done so much with tankers. Shoot, this is all I know is takers. And I can tell you, the whole time I done takers, there ain't no such thing as no dollar amount, two dollars a mile, none of that nonsense. That don't exist. Like the things that y'all going through in drive in, reefer and flatbed, none of that stuff exists in the tanker world. You know, I don't even know if the tanker world even got brokers to think that I think about. I don't even think we got brokers. At least I ain't seen none. But I don't know. I don't know. Tanker seem to be the best bang for, you know, your buck. Hmm. Would you do cryogenics? Uh, I looked into it. But it wasn't no cryogenic companies near me. The closest one was like 
Let's say they were like two hours in Decatur, Alabama. But it was a local position. I didn't want to drive no two hours. They was running, I think that's, uh, I forgot what interstate that is. They go down to Mobile, Alabama. They was coming up from somewhere right up in there with the cryogenics, the day cabs. So, not saying I wouldn't do it. It's just, I, I'm just not in the cryogenic area, that's all. But, the part of takers that I would do, I like to do any any type of taker that I can buy a truck, buy a trailer, and go like all the way with it. I try to get in those type of tanker gears. Although it's going to be costly, you know. Pneumatics, pneumatics just have to be cheap because I can get away. Pneumatic, you can get away with a $3,500 tanker trailer and make a killer, you know. Because it ain't nothing that fits on it, you know. And we, we just talking about some tires, brakes, and gaskets. And it's going to air up every time. I would say the same thing with this water tanker right here. It's the same thing as pneumatic. Except I don't know if you can find no $3,500 water tanker. But this ain't nothing but it's the same thing. Three three dome lids at the top with gaskets around them. You know, you can, all, you can go and buy new dome lid gaskets. You get all that from, uh, uh you can get it from Kraft craft tank uh, company or you can go to polar services and get all the parts you need which it ain't nothing but like i said gaskets and hoses on this trailer and a bunch of fittings tires and brakes air bags lights that's it you know so as long as the actual structure of the tank ain't got no hole in it it's gonna hold pressure and you're gonna make money you know now yeah of course you're gonna have everybody that Ain't really got no money be trying to tell you you need a brand new water hauling tank and trailer and all that crap and you need to go and spend a hundred grand on some new water hauling tank and trailer to make some money. Huh? You know, I stay away from them folks right there. You know, I'm cheap. OG tight pockets. Just because I'm W-2 and making free and clear money, I'm still OG tight pocket. My pocket's still tight, so we ain't got a lot of money over here. We ain't got, matter of fact, if I showed you my bank account, it looks sad. I think right now my bank account probably like $800. Because I don't keep nothing in no bank account. I keep it in the stock market, baby. That's all you need to know. Let me go check on this drive right quick. I've been on 37 minutes. Oh, yeah, that drive. Been in the stock. Check this drive situation. This drive should be done. Oh, no. A lot of thick mud out here, man. All muddy. See? You gotta chain up in the snow. You gotta chain up in the ice. And if your tires get to spinning in this shit, <laughs> yeah, you gotta chain up in the mud too. And you will be chained in the mud in North Dakota. Just ask any North Dakota driver, they'll let you know. <laughs> you gotta chain up in the mud too. That's how you get your traction, baby. What do y'all say at Beaver Creek, man? If you, you was asking me if I work at Beaver Creek, the answer is no. Man, we got a food, man. Which one of y'all took all the food? Oh, man. Damn. Look at this. Look, see what look at this, look at truck drivers do when you give them free food. Now, they didn't take all the food out of here because it's the weekend. They left us with about five bacon cheeseburgers, about four cheeseburgers. They didn't empty this damn thing, y'all. What they leave over here? Oh, they got the ground beef patties, huh? Shit, I ain't, that look good too, but I ain't got no way to cook that. Pork egg rolls? Is that what they say? Damn, they got red egg rolls? What kind of egg rolls is that? Sriracha? Okay, that's new. We ain't got no way to cook that. No way to cook that, baby. Should be alright. Nice and ghetto with it. Let's finish up my uh washing my FR uniform. That's 
what I got right now. But yeah, a lot of y'all been asking about Beaver Creek. I don't know why you're asking me about Beaver Creek, but no, I don't work at Beaver Creek. And I have no idea anything about Beaver Creek. I don't even think Beaver Creek, by the way. I don't even think they run Peterbilts. Not that I know. I ain't seen no Peterbilts over there. Matter of fact, if you look on Google Maps at Beaver Creek, you probably ain't gonna see this building. You wanna know why you ain't gonna see this building? Cause I don't work at Beaver Creek. <laughs> it's just that simple. But, instead of trying to guess where I work, if you want a job in North Dakota, it's free on Craigslist. I don't know why y'all black people make it so difficult to get a job in trucking. I'm gonna start charging y'all. That's why. Just for being stupid, I'm gonna start charging. Ain't nobody asked me for a job. I'm gonna start charging. I need a hundred dollars. Just start, just start charging your stupid stuff. Hundred dollars. That's you wanna know how to get a job in North Dakota is a hundred dollars. Now I'm not gonna tell you to go on Craigslist no more. I'm gonna tell you a hundred dollars. Once you pay me a hundred dollars, then I tell you Craigslist. That's <laughs> so sad. A hundred dollars <laughs> to tell you Craigslist. So sad. I do need Starlink. Yeah, I do. I actually tried to invest in, in that company. I did. I tried to. Uh, Elon Musk taking over the internet. Candace, I see you. I see you. I was going to tell you too, Candace. Because you want to do crude oil hollering. If you got your doubles and triples, you can go to Utah too. Salt Lake City. If you ain't scared of doubles and triples in Salt Lake City. I was going to go to Salt Lake City, but I ended up in North Dakota. I was going to go to Salt Lake City instead of North Dakota, only because I figured Salt Lake City was a better, you know, a town, better area than uh, North Dakota. But I ended up coming up here instead. Roosevelt, Utah, not SLC. Oh, don't tell me Roosevelt ain't, yeah, I think it was in Roosevelt. Don't tell me that's trash up there. How far is that from Salt Lake City? Because I was going to drive my car to Salt Lake City. Wasn't it like an hour? Or something like that? I don't know, I forgot. 150 miles. Oh, that's right, you got to learn how to drive 18 speed. Oh, that's right, I forgot. Yeah, I forgot we did talk about that, didn't we? Is it hard to get in the oversize? Nah, I wouldn't say so. If you already done flatbed, just find a company to do oversize. Let them train you. If I was to do flatbed, uh, uh, I would start off with step deck. That's what I was going to do. I just didn't want to do OTR, man. I just don't want nothing to do with OTR. If I was going to go OTR, I would have done step deck just to learn step deck. I wasn't going to do it for too long. Maybe like two months, three months. Turn the truck back in. The company truck just to learn step deck. But I don't want to do no OTR work. I like this local work, man. This local work where I get off work, I can go to the store, I can go get a hotel room if I want to, you know, I can go to the bar, I can go to the club, they ain't got none of that, they, none of that is in North Dakota. I'm just giving you an example, if you was local. You can go wherever, Walmart, Best Buy, Target, go get some food, I like jobs like those where you can still have a life when you get done trucking, you know. Go to gym, you know, but they ain't got none of that up here in this part of North Dakota. Oh, they ain't, the only thing they got up here fast food wise, they got a uh, Dairy Queen. That's it. That's the only fast food restaurant up here. As far as clubs, there is no clubs. Okay, they got a. I don't know if we would consider it a bar. Me and me and uh, me and two truck drivers, we had went to. I, I don't know if I would call it. It's either a bar or a restaurant. I'm going to say it's a restaurant. Well, 
I don't know, man. I, I had to ask one of the truck drivers: Is it a bar? or Is it a restaurant? Well, on Google Maps, it's a restaurant. They got they got awesome food. They got this this some of the best food I've had, or thus far. But you know, it's a bar too, cause they got they got pool there. They got uh, of course they sell all the alcohol you want. I forgot the name of it, but that's the only bar they got up here. And all all the oil field workers is in there. All the ones that don't drive trucks. I'm talking about all the guys that do rigging. All the guys that work on, you know, the frack sites on ground, all them guys, that's where they hang out at. So, oh, and then they got the casino up here too. I haven't been to the casino, never found the time to go. But a uh, casino be packed on the weekend with all the locals. It's called, uh, uh, I think it's like Four Bears Casino or something like that. Like I said, I ain't being, I ain't no gym. It's a gym in North Dakota, just not this part. You have to go to like Williston, North Dakota. It's like two hours from here. But yeah, no gym. Not only is it no gym, you ain't gonna have no time. There's no time for no gym. Keep in mind, we work 16 hours a day with no breaks. Just in case y'all didn't get catch that, 16 hours a day with no breaks, seven days a week. Okay. Do I need to repeat that? 16 hours per day with no breaks. Dang, it's not like doing oil fuel in Texas where you drive two hours, get loaded, sit another two hours, then go to stay in Japan and you go to sleep for goddamn 24 hours before you deliver. That's not what's going on up in here. You 16 straight hours of straight running. Well, not straight running because you got to load and unload, but I'm going to do a video and show y'all what I'm talking about. I had already shot the video, I just got to edit it and upload it and all that stuff. I did a full day of what it's like me working up here so y'all can see. But, you know. You know. A lot of money to be made up here. A lot of money to be made. A lot, a lot of money, man. I never got to visit, uh, I didn't go to Williston, North Dakota, I didn't go to Minute, I didn't go to Stanley, it's a lot of part of North Dakota, a lot of the biggest cities I never even seen, just because they two hours from here, I, I still ain't been to no Walmart out here, uh, the only store that I've been to is the truck stop, that's it, that's the only store I've been to since I've been up here, just the truck stop, because everything is so far away. You know, two, three hour drive, and, you know, I get off work at 8 p.m. <laughs> at 8 p.m., the sun is down. I'm not driving nowhere through this darkness, and not no two hours. We ain't finna go to Walmart through this darkness. So, yeah, I never went to Walmart. I, I go to the truck stop. That's uh, 30 minutes from here. See, even a truck stop is 30 minutes from here. But that's where you can go and get your food and stuff if you don't want disposal food. Cooking a truck. You know, but for the people trying to come to North Dakota, from what I see so far, all of these companies is 18 speed from the crude oil to the water haulers. Um, a lot of y'all got automatic restrictions. So in this video only, I will tell y'all, it's two companies that got automatic trucks, but I'm not going to tell you the companies. That's for you to figure out on your hard, your hardcore research. <laughs> so sad you gotta do hardcore research to find them but yeah it's two companies they got all automatic fleets up here they do water hauling but like i said y'all got to do the research figure those out you know you know but everybody else you say you think you found one is that right i think they all pay hourly though i think from, yeah, I think I think both of them pay hourly. I don't know what the hourly rate is. I don't know if they're making the same amount of money, but I think they are hourly. He said, "Who's it? Caron, Caron Transportation in Williston got automatics." Yeah, I never been in Williston. I don't know what's going on in that part of North Dakota. 
No idea. But the way I tell y'all, 18 speed transmission, extremely easy to drive though. Oh, it's extremely easy to drive. Extremely easy. I mean, it's just an H pattern, so just an H pattern. Oh, okay. I can put it in gear. Okay, I'll show y'all the pattern. All y'all that want to know. So it's real simple. So we right here in the middle. You got first gears up. Well, it could be second gear. Second gears up. You just go straight down. That'll be third. That'll be fourth. That'll be fifth down here. Flip the spilly up. You just re repeat the, the ace pattern. Go to six. Come down to seven. Eight, nine. Then flip that for ten. So, it's just an H. It's just a squad, man. You're just going up, straight down, over to the right, up, down, flick it, right back in the middle, come down. It's just an H pattern. That's all it is. Did you catch that? It's just an H in the middle. Then you go straight down. Then you go over here. Then you come down. <laughs> then you go over here and <laughs> then you come down and <laughs> then you go back over here and <laughs> then you come down so for the guys that do 10 speed transmission uh you just gonna skip the gear so like when you over here and you flick your splitter like this and you come over here for uh when you go down and left what is this uh fifth gear sixth gear you'll just skip this gear over here so instead of going on the 10 speed transmission when you in low and you down here and I think this is fourth when you come when you flick your split up instead of going all the way over and down you'll skip that gear and instead what you'll do is you'll flick it up and just go straight up like this and just down and over like that and like that so for the 10 speed drivers once again you just You'll be in low gear like this. I think this is fourth gear or fifth gear. Flick it up. You'll skip that sits and go straight up. Come down. Go over like this, like that. So, there you go. And as far as the splitter go, you got to watch a YouTube video on how to work the splitter. But how to get the truck to move through all the gears I just showed you. You ain't got to split no gears. But on the road test, you do. Somebody gave you a road test. But... And then of course you got the Peter built with all the gauges and stuff. They give you all these gauges. You know. Gauges, bunch of buttons. JVC radio at the top. So there you have it. Real easy to drive. It's just an H pattern. Nothing special about it. Same thing as a 13 speed, it's the same pattern. And like I said, if you're a 10 speed driver, you will just skip that uh, 6th gear or 5th gear, whichever one it is. And just drive it like a 10 speed, you know. Well, nothing to it, man, you know. If you need help, if you know how to drive, if you know how to drive a manual truck, all you got to do to learn the next gear pattern is just watch a YouTube video and somebody on YouTube will show you how to drive the trucks. And that's all you got to do. That's all you got to do. What's the time? Oh, it ain't number nine o'clock, huh? Let's read some comments. I learned the pattern just need to get behind the wheel. Yeah, it takes some practice. It definitely takes practice. What part of North Dakota do you work in? Uh, 
I work in Mandaree, North Dakota, but if you want to know where this terminal is at, the terminal is in Newtown, North Dakota. One of your moderators need to be need needs to boot JC trolling. Oh, I ain't even got to his message yet. Message retracted. I don't want to be a trucker no more. There's a lot of people want to give up their CDLs. A lot of people want to give up their CDLs. Is that right? It's so sad. It's so sad. Yep. A lot of people don't, man. A lot of people don't like trucking, man. You know? And when I say a lot of people, it's mainly all drive-in workers, general freight workers that don't like trucking no more. Me, I don't have a problem with trucking. You know, I don't have, since I've been in trucking, since I had my own authority, the rates ain't never been no issue. But keep in mind, since I had my authority, I have only hauled one loaded drive-in since I had my authority. And that was a J.B. Hunt load I took down to Texas to go check on the sandbox work down now. So I don't have no experience on brokers having a foot in my ass, $1.50, $2 a mile, because none of that stuff exists. And what I was doing in trucking with my authority, none of, none of that stuff exists with new Maddots. You know, obviously in the oil field, they ain't no dollar mile freight. You know, they well don't they don't even charge. You know, per mile, everything is per ton. So you know, so I don't have all that experience like that. So when trucking go down for everybody else because of the rates, it's not really affected on the tanker world. You know, customer call me trying to see if they can get a discount. Nope, we don't get no discounts over here. Nope, they call me, no discounts. They gonna hang up the phone with me, then they gonna call Bruce Oakley. You know what Bruce Oakley gonna tell them? Nope, no discounts. They gonna hang up the phone with Bruce Oakley. They gonna goddamn call. Uh, <laughs> uh, they used to call quiet the carriers. Yeah, they used to call quiet the carriers with their drive boat division. Hey. Y'all get discounts over there? Nope. Nope. We don't get no discounts over here. Ain't nobody giving no discounts, so. But, but, hey, but, but, but the driving hauls are hauling for a dollar a mile. What they got to do with us? We ain't, ain't hauling them for no dollar a mile. Nope. We don't need no dollar a mile around here. Nope. Not around here. You can buy your own pneumatic tanker. You can haul. You can go. You can, Look, Mr. Customer, you can get your own fleet going. You can get your own trailers, your own trucks, and you haul your own freight for a dollar a mile. How about that? How about that? It's so sad. How much did you spend on all your adjustment licenses? Um, I want to say maybe like $2,500. I'm licensed in almost in almost every state in the United States, except for New York, California, North Dakota, and uh, Vermont. And my main license expired last year. It expired in December because it was only for uh, only for that year. So I'm not I'm not licensed in Maine. Everywhere else though. Other than California, New York, and the ones I just named, I'm not licensed in. But, uh, man, I paid all this stuff for a front, you know. That's why if trucking ever go down bad, I got my insurance license, you know. I'm trying to get some more licenses and some other industries, too, just in case, you know, everything in trucking take a dump. I just don't know what I want to do with it, you know. Try to learn more skills outside of trucking. I had a couple of firms call me with insurance jobs, but I had declined them because I was doing trucking at the time. So, 
I got offered like three jobs, independent jobs with independent firms, but I had declined because I was doing trekking. So, but I keep up with all my training. I still go through all my uh, auto training. Still go through all my property training. I gotta get updated with uh. All the, you know, you got to stay up to date every two years with all the rules and regulations. You got to know what's going on with the house insurance, especially down in Florida. You know, I think a lot of those people are now going towards state insurance with the state now. A lot of the insurance companies ain't trying to cover those people because, first of all, they, you know, big ass target for hurricanes and... <laughs> Hurricane hit Florida, it's gonna do big as a dollars, and it's just like what insurance? An insurance company is a cash cow. You know, they rake a ton of money in with damn near no expenses. You know, so it's like a it's like a giant cash cow. <laughs> and when they drop Florida, it's even a bigger cash cow. And now you ain't you ain't talking about losing billions of dollars if a hurricane hit. You know, let the, let them get state insurance. Let the federal government pay for all this shoe shine. But this year, um, when hurricane season start, man, of course, Florida, they always the biggest one. Florida, Louisiana, you got the tornadoes that come through, um, Oklahoma and all that do all the damage. A lot of people go over to Denver, Colorado, man. I saw uh, if you went to like uh, if you in the property, they get a lot of hail damage out there. So, a lot of hail damage on cars and stuff. You rack up a lot of money out there. Um, man, it's work all over. You know, up on the Northeast, New York and all that, they hear like flooding and storms and stuff out there you know i'm not licensed up there in new york so northeast i probably would never go to you know i don't know nothing about the area i ain't never been up there in no car and navigated those streets and stuff so i probably won't go no no northeast or nothing like that unless you just pay top dollar but a lot of the insurance gears man when um uh, when these major storms hit you know, it's just like uh, it's just like this gig right here. They're gonna be offering like forty-five an hour, fifty dollars an hour. The most I've seen, fifty-five dollars an hour. But the problem is, man, it's just like trucking insurance. You working seven days a week, twelve hours a day. They call them seven twelves. Seven days a week, twelve hours a day with insurance. But it's, if you get the hourly gig, about forty-five an hour. Um, Overtime at the 40. Or, usually all the beginners take the hourly pay because you don't really know what you're doing, but you guarantee the paycheck because it's hourly. All the top dogs, they're going to be going into uh, the component pay. Component pay is when, you know, uh, you get a percentage of the damage that you, you know, doing your work on. So that's going to obviously pay more when you get a percentage of the damage, especially if you go into like a hurricane deployment and the whole city fucked up. Obviously, you don't want the hourly pay. You want to get paid per damage. You go to somebody's house, their house was $250,000 and it didn't got knocked over by a hurricane and they got, you know, $200,000 in damage and you getting freaking, you know, 2-3% of that. You know, that's obviously going to be more than the hourly pay. And, you know, it ain't going to take you nothing about two hours to write up a little you know, insurance estimate for them, and then you go. You just adjust it. You just write the estimate and you go. Let's see what y'all talking about. How many comments have I missed? Uh, JPTV came in the building. Damn, y'all wrote a lot of comments that fast. I'm never giving up my CDL, but I need to get out this truck and in the gym. Just gotta find something local. That's all. Find a local job, you know, or do like I do. I just go park the truck and I don't even drive a truck six months straight. 
<laughs> I'll be doing that sometimes. Shit. <laughs> I just came out of not driving a truck for a long time. You know? Park the truck. Well, it's a little bit different when you own the truck. You know? When you own the truck and got your own authority, it's a little bit different. So. Everybody ain't got their freedom. But you can definitely get out the truck, man. You can definitely get out the truck. So Biden is passing the AB5 law federally tomorrow. The independent contractor law. Tomorrow must be March 11th, huh? Yep, it's March 11th. I wonder how that's going to affect trucking. Um, they want them taxes paid. They hired, they hired over 30,000 some IRS agents to come out to everybody and ain't paying their taxes. You know, uh, they estimate that they losing, I think it was like $700 billion in taxes not being paid by 1099 workers. And they want all their money. So, first thing they do, if you, if you know right now, what's happening right now is federal government and health care. Federal government, they looking for 30,000 some employees, IRS agents. They're going to be coming out to you for this new bill, of course. <laughs> All the 1099 workers that ain't paying their fair share, writing everything. They're they coming out to you. They want their taxes. They want their money. They're going to get their money. It's going to take them a while. They're going to get their money. Uh, you got commercial lending, that whole whole entire program, all them banks, they owe their money here in a couple of days. Stop market, you know, gonna be all over the place on that. You know, just gotta be in position. Be in position to get ready to buy some stocks or get ready to hold on tight because the stock market up down sideways crypto up down sideways get ready new laws coming into place shoot they talking about uh uber and lyft drivers they supposed to be you know employees now i don't know how that's gonna work you know i try to i keep up with a uh, dirty trucking i watch uh see what's going on over there in that uh lyft world or, or uber i don't know which one she do but uh, I'd be so scared to get. In, well, I ain't gonna say nothing. But yeah, I'd be so scared to take that trip. And, and that, that, that I can't say nothing about it. But I just be watching. Cause I I know as soon as they do something funny about the check, she gonna let us know. She gonna let us know with the quickness. It don't matter if it's two in the morning. She gonna drop a video and let us know if she W two at ten nine nine still. So yeah, I don't know what's gonna happen in trucking. I just know uh, it's gonna get tough. It's finna get tough. But did y'all see the state of the union address, boy? That was scary right there. I ain't gonna lie. That was scary, boy. Oh, I saw it. I saw it. I saw it. It was everything I wasn't expecting. I ain't gonna lie. Now, I don't vote. Okay? That's the important. I, I have never voted. So I'm not the enemy. I'm just telling you what I saw. I turned it on the state of the union. I watched him from when he left the White House. When he pulled out the White House all the way to the freaking whatever the building called. I forgot the name of the building. But they cheered him from, from start to finish. Then they said, here come the president down the aisle. They was cheering and all. And then he got up there on the podium. And he started talking about everything. And boy, they were cheering left and right. And I'm sitting over there thinking in my head, I don't know if he's leaving office. I don't, I don't know about this. I don't, boy, they, they, on, they want four more. I'm not convinced he, um, yeah, I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced people want him out of office. Not after seeing that State of the Union address. Nah, I'm not convinced at all. <laughs> you know, I, I, they look like they ready to battle. <laughs> the election, the polls, that's what they look like. Nah, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I don't know about that, buddy. There's too many people cheering. Too many people cheering. I'm like, oh, oh no, nah, man, this... This don't look like no landslide. Not not what I saw on that State of the Union. Not all that cheering they got going on up in no no no. This might be a battle. It, it, it don't it don't. It look like the Democrats may have it. <laughs> nah, not a boo boo. Okay, I'm, I'm done. I don't think the law would target trucking. Oh, it will. Oh, it most definitely will. It might not target it right there. 
Oh, it's gonna target it all right. If you have an LLC, you'll be fine. I'm not sure what that got to do with the law, but if you didn't still run in 1099, you are good. No, they they coming out to 1099, period. Independent employees. Okay? You got to think, W-2 workers pay the most tax in the United States. After W-2 workers... DNS 1099, DNS corporations. So they need them 1099 workers to catch up to them W 2 workers on them taxes. So they hiring 30 some thousand IRS employees. They not hiring them, paying them 100,000 a year to just sit in some cubicle office. That ain't what they doing. <laughs> They coming out the truck drivers, they coming out the 1099, they coming out to everybody, okay? I'm just, I'm just saying. It may, I know it ain't gonna be it ain't gonna be immediately, because like I said, they're hiring for the positions. They still got thirty thousand slots to fill. That's gonna take a minute. You can apply too. You can apply for them jobs too. Get out you can get out of trucking. You get out of trucking. Four four trucker. He are, he already went and apply. He he applied and got the job. Four four trucking on YouTube. He yeah, he said, forget trucking, I'm going over here to the RS. They offer him a hundred thousand dollars a year. Yeah, he going to guess who we out there? He has the truck drivers. <laughs> yeah, it's so sad. He has truck drivers. No, nah, I'm just playing. But yeah, he would have got him a hundred thousand dollar job. So yeah, <laughs> home every day, home at the five p.m. Yeah, that's what he went and got. He shoot, if you know better, you'll do better. King D. Rods in the building. Drill, baby, drill. What you talking about, Drew? Making all the money. It was half and half. They didn't show Republicans not clapping. Is that what it was? Was it the camera angles? Maybe that's what it was. Cause I was confused. I was, boy, when he walked in, I was just so confused. I was like, what? What's that? All this cheering and celebrating. And have everybody looked at their bank accounts? I'm sh but I forgot. It. Now, keep in mind now, we also looking at a show. That's filled with the one percent. Everybody in that room is part of the one percent. The ninety-nine percent is outside the building. That's gonna yeah, that's us. We out. We was outside the building. We're the ninety-nine percent. The one percent is who was allowed in the building. Did y'all hear that heckler? Boy, that heckler boy. He he know what he's talking about, man. He yeah, that's how you gotta heckle him a little bit. He came here. Don't let him get away with everything. <laughs> So what's the law? I ain't read the law. I just heard about it. I don't know. I, I have to go look it up. We gonna find out though. We gonna find. Out. I, I, I got my ears open tomorrow. I'm trying to find out. Is anybody gonna affect them? Is anybody gonna? Okay, they passed the law, but is anybody gonna enforce it? <laughs> you know. Okay. They passed a lot of laws. They don't enforce. Who got the hundred k job? Uh, you go on YouTube and type four zero. Four trucker. His channel should pop up. He didn't took down majority of his videos, but uh, it's a black guy. Yeah, he work with the IRS now. He still do trucking videos though. Matter of fact, I think he did, he did a live feed recently showing you. My, yeah, I think he just did a live feed on what truck drivers need to do to fix their resume so they can apply. So yeah, go check that out. He did that I think yesterday or the day before. They slipped up and showed the whole room for a second. If you rewatch it, you'll see it. Oh yeah, I didn't see that part. I gotta go back and rewatch then. We need they somebody need time stump that in the comments. So it was camera angles, huh? Is that right? That's what they doing, huh? Cause I was confused. I was like, man, damn, man. everybody cheering. He like everybody like everybody in that room doing good. Ain't nobody affected up in here. I'm like, this is crazy. I ain't nobody affected, boy. I said, boy, this is the 1% right here. They ain't, they ain't paying that damn camera outside. <laughs> outside while all the protests going on. What the hell is going on up in here? <laughs> I'm just joking. Look, I don't vote, people. So calm down. I'm just joking. 
They come out with a 1099 bill. It's so sad. See, y'all don't even know what's going on in trucking. Y'all just holding that steering wheel. Y'all y'all don't know nothing. They passing a the law unless... What time is it? <laughs> it's freaking... Look, bro, they, they passing a the law in less than three hours, and y'all don't even know about it. It's so sad, boy. You three... Look, you got three... Look. Pay for the pass along in three hours and you don't even know. Oh my god. Oh my god. Woo. Truck driver. You got to be you gotta be more caught up on what's going on in the industry. You fuck around, drive out here, you be driving for free, not knowing what's going on. Come on, truck driver, wake up. They pass along in three hours. Wake up now. Wake up now. Oh no, don't, don't be one of them people that didn't know. What happened here, Andrew? Look at that. Don't nobody know nothing. That's so sad. They passed. Here they are. They about to pass. Biden is passing the law in three hours, and you don't know nothing about it. It's so sad. It's so sad. <laughs> this is a law affecting truck drivers, and you don't know nothing about the law. It's so sad. I ought to end the YouTube live feed just because of that. <laughs> Biden cutting your money, and you don't even know it. I just got up. All right, now. All right. You going to go to sleep, wake up, law going to be passed. You, you, you ain't even going to know something happened. You just going to be like, damn, there's something, there's something changed today. Everybody going to be going to work all normal and shit. <laughs> don't, don't worry. It's, it always hit a truck driver like a, like a ton of bricks. You know, don't, don't worry. Don't worry. Gotta give them money for the war. It's so sad. Hey, it's how it be. That's how it be. What's going on in Haiti, though? Y'all see what's going on down in Haiti? Ooh, now that's sad right there. Ooh, that's sad. What's going on in Haiti? Ooh, boy, damn. No food. Can't come out. Can't come out your house. You will get killed. 4,000 prisoners that escaped. Everybody armed with guns and wet boy. That's so, sad. Ooh. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Man, but if I was a prisoner in Haiti and they let me out, boy, we, oh boy, forget, forget trying to join the games and trying to fight back. We got to get up out of Haiti before they find us. Cause oh no, oh no, you know how it is. Break anybody broke out of jail? Now come on, now you know you on the timeline, right? They they, they know your name. Yeah, you may be free for about three months, I understand. But when they get when they restore order now, they gonna put you underneath the jail. So before all that happened, you got they got too much time to run right now. See, you bring out of jail in the United States, you only got about a good twenty four hours for they before they just catch you. If you one of them lucky ones, you'll get a couple of more days past. About a week is now nah, you ain't got no week now. Nah. About a week you done got caught by the end. But if you in Haiti Four thousand people? I'm on the first train smoking up out of there. Okay, how are we getting up and build a boat, build a raft? We finna cross the ocean, baby. We we finna cross the ocean. Man, shit, we finna go right over the United States and we finna join the rest of the crowd at the border. Yeah, we coming over with everybody else. Shit, I will be coming right over with everybody else. Biden still the president, we coming right on over. Hey, yeah, right on over. That's right. Just like everybody else. Yeah, just like everybody, we coming right on over. Ain't nobody gonna stop us. And they got donuts waiting when we get to the board. They got donuts, pack of water, food. Shit, yeah. <laughs> what you talking about? And I'm gonna ask him for a ticket. I ain't going to New York though. I don't want that ticket. I heard it's tough going to New York. Yeah, I'm out now. Nah, I'm gonna go to Tennessee. I wanna go to Tennessee. Uh, uh I go to Texas. Oh, uh, I ain't going nowhere in the Northeast, though. That, that that costs too much money, man. They didn't quit sending the migrants up there in the Northeast. That's too much money to operate up there. Uh, I go to Florida, Carolinas. We stay down south, you know. Shoot, all oh, they going up Northeast. That's that's too that's too taxing. Cost a lot of money to live up there. Oh, four four truck is in here. I didn't see his name. When did he come in? I don't see him. But yeah, that's his name, though. It's all about classifying what an independent contractor is. That's right. And a lot of truck drivers 
are not independent contractors. Of course, who is going to affect the most if they enforce it is going to be all those Chicago Russian companies that's got that's that's pretty much been invading, been avoiding paying your uh, your taxes. You know, no retirement for you. You know, a lot of truck drivers. If you just watch truck drivers on YouTube. Um, for the ones that's 1099, they don't have any like investments or anything, any type of money put up. A lot of these truck drivers are gonna need this social security when they get older, when they get in their sixties. It don't seem like they, you know, they're not gonna think about it now, but a lot of them gonna need that social security because a lot of them is going nowhere fast. You know, no money being made, no money being saved, no investments being made. Uh, just going nowhere fast. And when they get in their 60s, they're going to need this damn Social Security to draw the lead off. And they ain't going to be there because they was tipping that down and trucking and they didn't, you know, they let the Russians steal their retirement. So, but for a lot of people, a lot of people say, well, Andrew, Social Security ain't even going to be there. All right, yeah, that, that could be the case, <laughs> but if you uh, if you like me, you know, uh, we got our own brokerage account. We got our own IRA. We got our own brokerage account. We ain't, we ain't worrying, but we ain't trying to. We don't care nothing about the system. With the system, we ain't, we ain't, if we get it, we get it. If we don't, we don't even care because we got our own. We we independent. <laughs> we invest our own money. We ain't Mr. Charlie Loan Control our IRA account. Uh, I got them Roth account. 401k stock brokerage account is all us right here. We it's just my name on it. Okay, but yeah, a lot of them, a lot of truck drivers they don't know they need that social security. The ones that's 1099 and they not paying that social security, a lot of them really need that when they get older. Otherwise, they gonna have to keep working. I mean, they are gonna have to keep working anyway on the social security, but you know it'll help though. That's all I'm saying. It, it'll help. You know. But to let the Russians just uh, rob you of it, nah, I don't think it's, I don't think it's fair. I don't think it's fair. Hate it been like that for fifty years. Yeah, they have. Yeah. Yeah, I remember the last time when that hurricane hit Haiti and we had dropped all that food and water off down there. They've they been fucked up for years, you know. Yeah, I don't even think they can cross the border now that I think about it, out of Haiti. I think the United States should go over there and just take over the whole city, take over the whole country. Go and take them over. Just like how Russia taking over Ukraine. We can just go take over Haiti, you know. We ain't really got... We ain't got to send too many people. We ain't down to just shoot everybody up. We just down to, you know, just just go and make it part of us. And we'll just go ahead and, you know, just take it over, you know. One thing, no idea here, though. When Biden was talking, the, the, the Biden, when he first, when he first, when he first got up on that podium there, he started talking about Russian. One thing he did say, I didn't think about it. He said, uh, Putin ain't just going to stop in Ukraine. He going to keep going. When I heard that, I was like, oh. Wait a minute now. Where is he going out to Ukraine? Hold on now. No, wait, no, we didn't think about this. So you are you telling me that eventually we going to have to fight Russia? Because what do you mean he ain't going to stop in Ukraine? Because Ukraine is losing the war. And you said he ain't going to stop in Ukraine. Where is he going after Ukraine? Because he, if he ain't stopping, where is he going next? And what are we going to do about it? I'm just confused. Because how does Biden know he ain't stopping? Where is he going next? That's all I'm saying. Why was that the first topic? Why, why, why come that was the first thing he said at the podium? Is that Russia ain't stopping at Ukraine. Why, why was that the first topic? We... That was the first thing that came to mind on the State of the Union address. That was 
That was that was the main thing. When nobody talking about Russia or Ukraine, don't nobody give a fuck. But he didn't went up there. And that was the first thing coming out of his mouth. I'm like, whoa, they not stopping in Ukraine. I'm. You mean tell me we're gonna have a war soon? I'm, I'm confused. He wanted Finland too, but Finland joined NATO. If you're not running like business, it's, it's best to be W two driver. Hey, it really is. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Even when I was a motor carrier, which I still am, I use QuickBus and I just I just pay for their payroll uh, full service, man. And I just W two myself. Just take taxes out, you know. I just rather do it that way. It's a lot easier, you know. You can control how much you want to pay yourself. I just use QuickBooks, man. You know, you got ADP, you got QuickBooks, you got Paychecks. I like QuickBooks. I've been using a system, but I'm pretty sure ADP is just as good. But you know, y'all can just go in W two yourselves. Then you qualify for all types of shit. You know, it's a lot easier to just. I know y'all don't want to pay taxes because they, they take it a lot, okay? I, I pay like $4,000 a month in taxes. I, I understand. You thinking in your head what you could have done with that $4,000. I, I Trust me, I'm thinking the same thing too. I'm like, man, God, $4,000 in taxes? It's crazy. What I could have done with that? So yeah, I know I know how truck drivers think. Yeah, when you see a number like that, you like, man, I'm going ten nine nine. Fuck all that. So yeah, I already know. Going to debt more in two weeks, or they decent drew back in the day. They was I don't know about now. Uh, back in the day, the rates was a lot higher. Back in the day, um, I forgot the name. I forgot the owner of the company. Um. I forgot his name, but when I was there in 2018, the owner of the company, he it was him and all of his high school buddies, they was running the company. He had all his high school buddies as a dispatcher and all that, and uh, that's back when the freaking owner-operators was grossing 20000 a week, and the company drivers was taking, you know, almost close to 3000 a week, and we was only doing like one load a day. We would come out of Volca, Texas and go to Midland, Texas, it's like 202 Miles, 205 miles, a load would pay 1400 Then when you got out there, you would sit 10 hours for $120 an hour and demerge. And, you know, everybody was making money. And then, uh, you know, as he started to grow, man, he fired all his high school buddies and friends. Because, obviously, they was all it got corrupt. And drivers like me could pay them money to get dispatched fast and skip the line and all that nonsense. So, you know, things just change over time with these companies, you know. So, uh, it's just a foot in the dough. That's all. Just, if you ain't never been to Odessa or me Atlanta, it's just a foot in the dough. You go down there and see what else is going on. You know, that's all it is. Are there any good car hauling jobs that you know of? I don't know nothing about car hauling. Am I still running my authority? Yep. Why is trucking slow right now? Uh. I don't know what part of track are you doing. Uh, tracking ain't slow over here. You're getting out of dry van leaving creep. The oil field have changed. Got saturated in certain areas. That's true. Speaking of oil field, man, uh, my oil field customer sent me a uh, bid sheet to bid on some lays down there in Texas. Of course, they're going to pick the lowest bidder. I think I'm going to do a video on it to show oil field workers, you know, uh, how the process works. You know, a lot of people don't understand why they, why rates went down in the oil field and why their money is getting cut. So I think what I'm going to do is uh, show everybody the email, show y'all what's actually going on behind the scenes. And how all the carriers have to be it on these sandbox lanes, you know, because you guys don't understand. Every quarter, 
they request these carriers to be at on these lanes and they taking the lowest be at okay so when you see your rate sheet it says zero to ten miles pays you know five cent or and freaking 20 miles to 30 miles pay 10 cent <laughs> where they get those numbers from is some soon guy wrote some shit that low in the beer contract and he won you know customer take the lowest beer it didn't used to be like that it used to be the customer gave all the carriers the same rate sheet and then they start listening to everything going on in drive in and general friend they're like oh wait a minute truck drivers are haul for cheap negotiate rates man we ought to try that we, we ought to let we ought to let these truck drivers negotiate they uh, truck drivers how, how much would you truck driver how much would you do this lane for oh man 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 if you give it to me man i I, 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 I do it for free. I do it. I do it for free. They for free. For free. And then that's how I got so cheap right there. Oh, for, you gonna do it for free? But take the whole thing then. Yeah, take the whole thing. He said he gonna do it. all this time. We were paying ten dollars a mile. You said you'll do it for free if we give you if we give you the whole lane. You gonna do it for free? I'm gonna do it for free. And that, that's shit. They gave it to him. He said he gonna do it for free. And then he, he he tried to do it for free and without business. <laughs> it's so sad. I gotta get up out of here, man. I gotta get some heat going on. I've been on here an hour and thirty with no heat. It's freezing cold. It's freezing cold, boy. I'm finna get up out of here. Start this truck up. Get the engine warmed up. Anyways, I'll figure it up off of here and go to bed because I only got two more days up here, so you know. Then I'm gone. So I'm going to catch y'all tomorrow. Y'all have a good night. Stock market open up in the morning. Make sure you keep your eyes on it. Never know what can happen. <laughs>